uh, or our, my own uh, apprehension of time, as if everything that has ever been, the past, that is, is unfindable, right? We, we have memories, but those memories are thoughts or images, which when we look for them, there's, no, there's nothing there. And similarly with the future, we have ideas about, well, this interview will end, we'll go on with our day, something else will happen. But that too is a thought and images. Mm -hmm. So everything that, it's as if this moment that we have, that it, we're sharing at this right now, is, is like an infinitesimal synapse between what has been and what will be. And when we look for this moment, where, where is it? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It, it's always uh. vanishing from itself. Uh. And that, uh, that's why I've, I've kind of gone to that, because that's, this moment has this kind of uh, obliteration of time. And that's freshness. That's this innocence that, is, that we share, actually, not only with each other and all living beings, but everything. Everything that appears is, appears in this infinitesimal synapse now. Completely fresh, uh, in a sense, a magical display, as the Tibetans call it, um, that arises out of what? Nothing, and vanishes into nothing itself nothing, and yet it's as if reality is a continual exaltation. You know, your wife mentioned earlier this word logos, you know, that in the beginning was the word. The word is, in the beginning was vibration. Beginning, again, time. As soon as there's a beginning, there is time. And that, this, this beginning, this word, this vibration that is now, we're only vibration, we're only light. This is just light happening. It, you can appreciate how it, it joins, it is one with, you know, it's vibrating, but to, the, to whatever it is that vibrates, light and so on, it never is other than pure this. Pure, pure now. Pure this. Yeah. Pure this. You see, it isn't even, in the beginning was the word, and now there's not even the word. And that's how it seems to me, and, and I know this is a way of talking and thinking, so we can make, we can dream up really interesting conversations about this kind of cosmology, but for me, it only is useful if we have a direct experience of, it's sort of like, oh, it's how you, you appear in this moment, how I appear in this moment, uh, actually fresh. So, it's an amazing experience you had. Mm -hmm. And what happened after the, the trip? It, it, was, uh, it was extremely powerful. I remember it uh, later as lasting about 40 hours, actually, much more, uh, with yeah. this sense of absolute clarity and innocence. And then I had no background. I had knew nothing about mysticism. I had no training. I had no anything. And I was soon, uh, I don't know, fell into a quarrel with my girlfriend or something. And but, but on the other hand, yeah. you said your father was friendly with Ram Dass and Timothy yeah. Leary, so there was obviously some kind of input there. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And it's, so it started. Uh, and um, for a couple of years, I kept thinking, I thought, well, it must be, if I take more of this stuff, it's, it's in the pill. That's you know? interesting. It's in it? the yeah. pill. Yeah. It's something I, that if I take it, it will yeah. do this thing. But it, it doesn't. It, it's just a, a substance, sometimes a little 
a little by grace, maybe a little. It gives you a taste. A taste. Yeah. But I realized after a while that something, whatever it, this is, this fresh realization, uh, is it's not going to be the result of, well, certainly a physical substance that I imbibe, and so I was guided in one way or another to. Basically, I, I, there must be people in the world who know about this that I experienced, who, who, who can guide me more. In a, uh, so you could have the experience yeah. without having to take Exactly, the and that it would be sustainable. Yes. So my quest began, and I was fortunate to, uh, to find, after a few years, a Sufi teacher, uh, Pira Murshid Fazal and Ayat Khan. And, and he was, he had a school in England, here, in Surrey at that time, and Ahanka, they're called. So I stayed there for five years, and I, I, I d deeply uh, trained in Sufi practices through what, him. What does that mean, training in Sufi practices? What does that entail? Well, at that time, and in this, in this particular tradition, any number of things, it was uh, <coughs> his uh, we did uh, a lot of zikr, which is a sort of mantra practice. We did, uh, uh, we practiced the you know arts of wakefulness. That is to say, every morning you wake up uh, in the deep of the night, uh, let's say, uh, two in the morning, and someone would come to your bed and would whisper in your ear while you're asleep, "Prayer is better than sleep." Prayer is better than sleep. <laughs> so you you'd didn't get up. You didn't that at the time, <laughs> did you? <laughs> and then you would get up and you would do your practices for two hours. And at four o'clock, go back to bed. So right. that kind of uh, discipline and clar trying to find clarity again. Any number of practices like that uh, fasting. We did uh, monthly fasts. We, uh, itinerancy was another one where we were sent on, on journeys. Uh, in a way similar to how I had done as a young man, as an as a older boy, looking for d just to, there might be a destination given or something that you had to go and get and bring back or just experience something that was, you know, go far, go to the Celebes, go to, uh, we, you know, we had a, at that time a whole fleet of motorcycles in India, so we would go there and travel around India, basically uh, going, putting ourselves through extremes of experience. Nice. And, and all of this stuff to break through habits of mind, assumptions of who we are, put yourself in uh, situations which talk about ending, you know, breaking through parochialism. I found my, <laughs> my guide in that. And how was this for you? Oh, all sorts of things. It was scary and um, ex you know, exuberant, and uh, it was a great adventure, like these things are. Um, and I, I was, I deeply loved my teacher. I, he was a quixotic uh, man with many different aspects to him, uh, but he um, he had a, a mystic glance and steadiness, which deeply touched me. And so, if he said. You know, I, I trusted his guidance. He never took advantage of it, that, you know, that I experienced uh, with me. He was, in a way, always trying to break through. Well, Sufis have a, a word for it, which is unlearning. We have to go through a process of unlearning before we can uh, open in a in a more consistent way to this moment.